The subject of racial variation is something that's uh, really interested me for as long as I can remember, and uh, I'm pretty much obsessed with the idea of trying to figure out why do people who live in certain parts of the world look a certain way? Um, what are the conditions that uh, created these differences? It's ironic, and um, I don't generally discuss things like this, but um, I don't, I'm not afraid of considering anything inside my own mind or discussing it with people that I know um, who know me for what I am. I'm uh, not uh, a racist, or at least not in a negative sense. I'm fascinated by race, and I believe that, uh, that there are um, explanations for people looking the way they look. Um, but it's an, a potentially inflammatory subject that I generally avoid discussing with, uh, with people that I, uh, I um, am not sure about or who are not sure about me. And certainly uh, on YouTube, I'm not going to discuss some of my more uh, uh, controversial views on the issue. But it does interest me. Um, and I will say, though, that because of the fact that I'm willing to discuss anything, think any thoughts about any subject, um, being completely honest with myself, uh, I have concluded uh, that um, race is pretty much a random thing, and you can't really conclude anything about it. Every uh, rule that you care to come up with has an exception, has a... Uh, um, a counter rule, I wouldn't even say an exception, but a counter rule that contradicts uh, the position that one comes up with. So my obsession with race, if you want to call it, has led me actually to conclude that racism is um, not a valid position. It, it doesn't make sense even when you take it on its own merits, even if you believe its own um, argumentation, its own methodology. It doesn't work. <clears throat> but um, something that, that uh, I have um, uh, noted in connection with uh, your video, The Evolution of Skin Color, uh, Coughlin666, is um, I've traveled extensively in India. In fact, that was the first uh, non-European country that I ever visited, and it really put the hook in me, and India has the potential or has the tendency to do that. Um, and I think that a lot of Western tourists in India had sort of the same experience I did um, the first time I came across an Indian albino. You find yourself gawking at that person in a way that you wouldn't really say gawk at a, a, even a, an African or Asian albino because you've adjusted to the fact that you're in India so people look differently and suddenly you see another Indian, in other words he, he or she may be speaking uh, with an Indian accent uh, dressed as an Indian, speaking an Indian language, body movement is Indian, <clears throat> and yet you are inescapably led to conclude that you are looking at a European because of the way that this albino looks. And you sort of, if, if your mind works the way mine does, you sort of think, oh my heavens, maybe that's where we all came from, us pale-skinned people. Um, and if you accept the fact that albinism is sort of a genetic disadvantage, shall we say, you sort of end up asking yourself, well, are we all a genetic uh, throwback or something like that? Um, but this sort of gets contradicted if you're honest enough with yourself to observe what you see around you. <clears throat> Throughout almost the entire world, any civilization you care to mention, white women, fair skin, I shouldn't even say white women, but women with fair skin. It's not so much a question of race, but color uh, with fair skin are almost universally considered more attractive to males. That's not um, to say that this rule applies to males, to men. It's interesting. Um, dark-skinned males don't seem to feel the same way about being dark as, um, as they feel about women being dark. From the Philippines to China to South Asia to the Middle East to Latin America, 
blondes have more fun. Fair-skinned women are seen as universally more attractive. And if you actually study the history of this sort of thing, this has been the case long before white people ever arrived among these people to skew their perceptions and to say that the dominant uh, race here, the militarily or economically or politically dominant race, is more attractive. The ancient Egyptians felt the same way, the ancient Indians felt the same way, uh, long before they ever even knew that Europeans existed or cared for that matter. <coughs> Now, genetically, one would assume that if somebody is a throwback, that would make them somewhat repugnant. People would not want to breed with them. So that kind of flies in the face of the albino uh, theory of the uh, emergence of white people. And again, it's only my own theory. I'm no scientist. I'm uh, no anthropologist or, uh, or anything like that. It's just my own reasoning. Um, so it is an interesting thing, um, but as I say, every theory or every generalization you care to come up with has a counter generalization that one can make. And uh, on its own terms, um, racism doesn't work, uh, even if one is still interested in racial variation, at least as a uh, as a somewhat pedantic uh, science. Thank you.